Good morning, I'm Robin Williams. I'm a consultant interventional radiologist. Today I'm going to show you how to do basic arch aortography and select one of the arch vessels on the Symbionics simulator. So basic access, we're going to use a standard 035 J-tipped wire, which we'll select from the menu. And we'll insert this via the right groin. And we'll see the wire appear somewhere in the mid-thoracic aorta. And you can see the J-tip forming. At this stage, we're going to insert an access sheath over the guide wire. We have a choice of sizes. We're going to use a six French sheath And again, we're going to aim to keep the tip of the guide wire in exactly that position. So my right hand will be on the back end of the guide wire and left hand close to the patient's groin, advancing the access sheath. And again, you'll see the sheath appearing in the mid thoracic aorta. At this stage, we need to remove the dilator from the sheath. This is done by the computer. You can see the, the dilator being removed there. And we're going to advance the guide wire around the aortic arch. At this point, to get a far better view of the aortic arch, we need to adjust the angle of the C-arm into a left anterior oblique. And reposition the table. So the guide wire and the sheath are in the middle of the screen. And we're going to advance the J-tip wire round into the ascending aorta. We now need to insert a catheter to perform our diag diagnostic angiogram. And typically we'd use a pigtail catheter. We tend to use a five French catheter because the flow rates required in the aortic arch are quite high. And we'll thread that onto the end of the guide wire. While my assistant's inserting or advancing the catheter, I'm going to make sure I keep hold of the guide wire so it doesn't get moved. And now I've got control of both the catheter and the guide wire. Again. Right hand on the guide wire. aiming to keep the tip of the guide wire in roughly the same position. And we'll see the catheter appearing in the mid thoracic aorta again. Just pulling back slightly on the guide wire as I advance the catheter just to keep the position stable. So the caster's appearing, so I'm going to advance slowly around the aortic arch. And we're expecting to see the arch vessels appear or arise from the apex of the arch. So I'm going to withdraw the guide wire and let the pigtail shape form, leaving the pigtail in approximately the right position to do the angiogram. And you can rotate it freely to see the shape of the caster there. The pigtail caster is the one caster it's safe to advance by itself around the arch. Sometimes needs the guide wire to give it a bit of stability. And we'll just take it a little bit further in so we get the best possible opacification of the arch, vessel, arch vessels. At this stage, we need to do an angiogram. The volume of contrast we need in the aortic arch depends slightly on the size of the patient, but a good rule of thumb is approximately 30 mils of contrast at about 15 or 20 mils a second. And that's something that you need to inject via a pump as opposed to via by hand. So on the symbionic simulator, we can inject via the sidearm of the sheath or via the catheter. We're gonna highlight the catheter, so we inject via the catheter. And we're gonna perform a subtracted run. 
with automatic injection. So I'm going to use the middle pedal and inject. We see maximum pacification of the vessels. Take my foot off the pedal and we then have a reference image on the left hand screen. And we can overlay that image onto the um, working monitor if we need to. So now we have our live monitor and we're going to select the innominate artery which is the common origin of the carotid and the subclavian artery on the right. To do that I need to change the catheter. So we're going to advance the guide wire back through the catheter and remove this pigtail. So we straighten the pigtail out. Try and avoid bouncing the guide wire off the aortic valve if possible. And I'm going to keep my left hand on the sheath and remove the catheter and guide wire one-handed but keeping the guide wire in position. This is something you can do easily with a bit of experience, but initially it's better to get an assistant to hold the sheath and use one hand on the wire and one hand on the catheter. So the catheter's now been removed. We're going to change it for something more appropriate to select the innominate artery. Generally speaking, something like a headhunter catheter is a very good choice. It's called an H1 on this machine, and we'll use, it doesn't really matter, four or five French. So we're going to advance that back over the guide wire. I'll just pull the wire back a little. And take it past the origin of the vessel. That's important in this case. We're actually engaging the vessel by pulling the catheter backwards. I'm then going to pull the guide wire back out and let the catheter form its shape. And as I just taught the catheter, rotate it, you can see its shape forming. It's a simple forward curve. And the way we're going to engage the vessel is to withdraw it slowly. As we get close to the vessel origin, rotate it through 180 degrees and it should pop up and it should be a nice controlled manner. If that doesn't happen on the first time, then keep withdrawing the caster further back, advance the J-wire back through the catheter into the ascending aorta, advance the caster again and then repeat the process. So we make sure the guide wire is out of the catheter and we just put a little injection of contrast in through the catheter to make sure we're in the correct vessel. Again, on the symbionic simulator, you can inject, uh, select whether you're injecting via the sheath or the catheter. And there we can see we've engaged the innominate artery. At this stage, let's say we want to select the subclavian artery rather than the carotid. We can do a subtracted run, but let's position the table a little bit more appropriately. Another subtracted run, this time using a syringe rather than the pump. And there we can see a subtracted run demonstrating the bifurcation of the subclavian necrotid arteries actually overlying each other and a tortuous subclavian artery. So a far better view of that will be gained if we do the opposite oblique. So we come into a right anterior oblique. We've still got the subtracted angiogram overlying. So we'll just get rid of that. Reposition the table. And then again, middle pedal and repeat that angiogram. And there we can see a better view of the bifurcation between the subclavian and the carotid artery. We're going to change our guide wire for something much more appropriate to select between the two vessels. And this is a hydrophilic uh, angle tip guide wire. And you'll see it appear. And again, advance very slowly out the tip of the caster. We've got a relatively unstable position. If we go too quickly, we can push the caster out from the vessel. And that, I think, has just gone straight up into the carotid artery, so we've selected the wrong vessel. We'll just come back. I'm just going to withdraw the caster slightly. 
again, it's preferring to choose the carotid artery. And that has now selected the subclavian artery. So we're taking it over the apex of that bend, rotate the guide wire to help it go further out into the subclavian artery. So as far as we need to go, and I'm just going to advance the catheter a little bit further on. Past the origin of the carotid. And we can remove the guide wire and do one last angiogram to confirm our position. Just a very small injection first, just to make sure the catheter tip isn't lodged against the vessel wall. And then finally, another subtracted run.